Hello everybody, I'm Michael Ralph, and today we're going to be looking at resampling to determine whether or not there's a significant difference between two experimental populations. So we're going to start with our two actual populations. So we've taken some measurements from a control set and then an experimental set, and we want to know whether or not they are the same. So of course in our significance test, and we always want to start by working against a null hypothesis which says that they are not different, that they are exactly the same. And so if they're the same, then all of these measurements reflect the same phenomena. So we can combine them into one larger pool of data that all comes from the same place. Remember that this is the null hypothesis. So all of this work is going to be establishing what would happen if these differences occurred only to due to chance. So if we have this combined data set, let's set up what would it look like if we just pulled a control data set an experimental data set from this larger hypothetically identical data pool. So I'm going to do an indirect reference and I want it to be exactly the column where my data is found which is C so qu um, quotation marks around that C and then ampersand and then the number reference is going to be a random selection between the top which is row 2 and the bottom which is row 56. Do my two parentheses to close it and hit enter. And now I have one randomly selected number. I'm going to do that enough times to get a full data set that matches my control size. And then I just copied it over to the experimental because remember in the null we're saying they're identical and so they should be. And then when I tell Excel to calculate my formulas, I have two randomly selected data sets. Now I want to calculate some measures of central tendency. So I'm going to do a metrics for the con actual control data and the actual experimental data. The median is going to be the number that you probably want. Mean won't be very useful here. And so the median for our actual control data, median for our actual experimental data. And then what's really interesting is the difference between those two, which the difference, we want the absolute value of the difference between those two numbers. We don't care about the sign. And so there's a difference of two there. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for our null data sets. And we want the median. And then our difference. So we got a difference that's pretty high here, but does that happen every time? This time it's a little lower than our experimental difference. And so what we want to know is how likely is it that our difference of two is a significant difference? How often would it happen if we just did a random draw like we have here? So as you can see, I want to do lots of trials. I want to see what happens if I do this a bunch. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to get lots of trials and lots of differences. How many trials? Three, more than three. How many? Thirty. Uh, we've got a computer, so let's take advantage of it and let's do more than 30. Let's do let's do a thousand. A thousand trials. And what we want to do is we want the difference. So we're just gonna do the equals the difference. But then we're gonna take advantage of Excel's ability to do some what if analysis. So we're gonna select all the trials and all the spaces where there is a number for a difference. Remember to select both columns here, but do not select your labels. And then I'm going to tell it to do some what if analysis over here under data, data table, leave the row blank, and the column input, we want to select an empty cell. Trust me, it's weird, but it'll work, and tell it okay. And now it has filled in all of our all of our cells. And when I hit calculate now, I have 1,000 different trials of randomly creating two populations from our larger null population, and then finding a difference in the mean between those two. So these are all differences. So now let's see what happened in the bigger picture, how often did different things occur? So I'm going to do some bins and some counts and looking just eyeballing the differences in our medians here I'm thinking that probably intervals of three are appropriate and let's go all the way down to uh, mid-30s, why not? And then what I want it to do is I want it to count all of these, so select all of your openings hit an equals and this is going to be a frequency analysis and we're going to select all of our data comma over and then we 
we want to tell it that our intervals are these bin demarcations here. Close parentheses and then don't hit enter. We hold shift, hold control, and then hit enter. And it'll fill all of them in all at once. And just as a spot check, let's do an in and make sure we know that we did a thousand. So let's make sure that all 1,000 of those trials showed up in our data. Sure enough, they're there, so we're in good shape. So then we want to know numbers are good, but frequencies are better. So to find a frequency, we do how often the thing happened that we care about divided by how often things happened. Remember to lock that. That's F4. Hit Enter, and we'll copy and paste that down. And then we're going to tell Excel those are percentages. Make, make them nice and pretty for us. We would appreciate it. And it'll do just that. Calculate it. And sure enough, now we get a picture. So let's visualize that. What actually happens here? And we can see that a difference in medians of less than, less than 3. So let's tell Excel where to find those labels. So it's a little easier to understand. Our series name, these are frequencies. There we go. So less than three is actually very uncommon, but then we get a difference of three almost 30% of the time. Six, it drop down, drops down a little more, and we see there's a pretty predictable, nice pattern here in decreasing frequencies for increasing differences in medians. And so from here, we can say, well, how unlikely does the difference in median have to be in order for us to say, yes, it is a significant difference? Well, less than 30% of the time, way too much. We know as a practice that scientists choose 5% of the time or less. So we have a 5% um, access label here. So let's follow that over and we can see if we follow it all the way over that about here and it's a little bit fuzzy so maybe we'll just call it 18 for this run is going to be our critical value where we cross that 5% threshold. So we need a difference in median of 18 or more in order to say that, yeah, that's that happens 5% of the time or less. So that is a significant occurrence for us. That probably did not happen due only to chance. And so now, given that critical value of about 18, we can come back here and say that a difference in median of 2 is actually very, very low and is surprisingly common based on this curve that we can see in our data.